Hi, I'm happy to be at the shop's first try again and yeah, more than happy to talk with Peter Bauer, our legend, our German legend in snowboarding and splitboarding and he's going to explain his new splitboard line on the first day of the shop's first try. Hello guys, so thanks for coming here. So what you see here is our three split boards in what we call the knuckle sandwich construction. All three are really super durable. They have mainly a black base, which is easy to repair. Knuckle sandwich construction also means it's a glass fiber board with a plus 30 minus 30 carbon grid for reinforcement, for adding pop and a really super durable top sheet to avoid chipping. This construction comes in three different shapes. We have the tour operator, which is a kind of a directional twin which is also possible to make like backcountry freestyle on this board. The surf shuttle which is new for next year is a more of a surfy uh, board with a swallowtail and a 3D nose and here we have the Mahalo which is the woman's version comes in a shorter and narrower geometry obviously for the ladies and all those three boards they are featuring stratospheric top sheet coating which is a new treatment of the top sheet which um, prevents the snow to go away so to avoid uh, sticky snow piling up which means the board is lighter out in nature so these two are our super light high-end split boards the milli surf and the milligram they both have full carbon construction super super light very responsive for the guy who wants to be who wants to get on the peak super efficiently. Um, the Milli Surf is a kind of a surfier shape with a swallowtail. You also see the 3D nose shape here, which we call a crossbuster nose, which makes sure the board is always floating. And then we have the Milligram, which is more of a traditional um, all mountain, big mountain, tapered directional shape. And Award-winning boards for the past five years used to be the world's lightest split boards for the past years and um, with this construction and with the stratospheric top sheet coating it's insane it's insane it's the lightest split board in the snow mini surf surf shuttle absolutely identical geometry but completely two different constructions sometimes it's difficult to understand which to take but actually it's an easy decision. First of all, quite expensive, not so expensive, super light, super, super, super light, um, very easy to repair, black base, um, if you hit 20 rocks you will repair it and it will still look very nice. Also easy to repair except along the edge where it's orange, but sometimes cosmetics count as well. So regarding how the boards behave in the snow, obviously this is a glass construction with a little bit of carbon grid inside. It's more forgiving, maybe a little bit smoother to ride. Carbon, as you all know, is very responsive. You need to be on it. It forgives less mistakes. But if you are a technical charger, you'll have a lot of fun with this as well. I have a different question. This question is about the use case of the board. So what is the best way to, to use your split boards? Are they more for high alpine split boarding, for free ride, so, freestyle? What the way people should use it to get most out of it? In general, the split board group is already a little bit fragmented. You're dealing with split boarders. They really they want to have high performance gear, super light. They want to have really, they go for the efficiency to go up and really have the lightest possible equipment. And obviously this also qualifies to a different price range, right? So we're talking about 11, 1200 plus for the board only. So this is one of the target group we are catering. This is especially the Millisurf or the Milligram. And then one price range lower is not only catering a target group with a different wallet, it's also for people who want to have more of an easy going board because um, carbon as a, as a board concept is a lot more, let's say, demanding for rider, a lot more responsive. Whereas our knuckle sandwich construction, where the main fiber is glass fiber, it's a lot more 
easy go and Ladies it's and forgiving when you make a mistake, boys, especially on harder snow, which sometimes happen to find in, in skateboarding. You don't yes, get thrown off. You, need, you don't need to be so alert. Right, so this is pretty much um, the Mr. kind Edoch. of split board target groups we are catering with our boards. For which kind of rider is the split board best? You already were talking about like kind of free ride splitter, wellness splitter, freestyle splitter, training splitter, and alpine splitter. So it's kind of mixture. I mean, for high alpine, for people who want to go for cardiac, which is also uh, a splitter which exists. Um, this is the Millisurf Milligram because it's super lightweight, it's high performance, and that's the board for them. Okay. It's also both boards have a directional shape, which is the geometry these guys are looking for. Mm -hmm. Whereas more freestyle oriented or more surfy oriented people, for those we have the tour operator or we have the um, surf shuttle. Like we are in like yeah. okay. And also for the female rider, we have the Mahalo, which is here, which is also a okay. knuckle sandwich construction but yeah. obviously shorter narrower softer for the ladies all right so why should i buy your brand or especially your split boards and not from a different brand that's a very good question um it seems that more and more people can answer that question because they buy our stuff okay good. having said yeah. that yeah. i didn't mention an argument yet but we have been in the business for a long time now i've been designing boards for 35 years now, okay. I I think I can say I know what I'm doing, and we've been winning all kinds of tests lately with a milligram, with all our other boards. We are working with a very sustainable factory. They're investing a lot in sustainability right now. Also, the materials are sustainable. The factory is really. I mean, you you can't be the sustainability champion today. It's a process, right? But for the past few years, especially when we have won the ISPO ECHO Awards, we have learned a lot. We have learned a lot regarding what to use, where to shave off the toxic elements okay, in the snowboard okay. production. Yeah. And also we know what the customer wants. Uh, how many years can I expect to use your split boards? I already have experience. I use, I use one of the Antli milligrams. Three years, about 100,000 altimeters, and yeah, after it, to be honest, it was still usable, but it was a little bit softer, and I just wanted to change the split board after 100,000 altimeters. But you also need to consider you don't have to pay for the split board, so it's very easy for you to change. Yeah, because of this, I ask you. Yeah. yeah. Now, but I might go. Yeah. Often, more often than usual people as well. Yeah. It really depends. Like we have a guide in Kumayur. He's been similar to you. Maybe he has even more vertical drop meters. He's been using a milligram from four years ago. Obviously, it has scratches because when you're in the backcountry, you're exposed to rocks and you destroy the base. But other than that, the board works perfectly. It almost looks like new. Uh, but maybe also because he takes care a lot. Obviously, in the backcountry, you hit rocks. If you're unlucky, the board is killed at the first turn. That happens. In general, we have to say that glass is the more robust construction in comparison to carbon. It's, it's like this. Uh, shaving off weights always means that the board might be a little bit more fragile. But not um, necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are doing carbon boards and they break very quickly. We, I think, have maybe the least, the smallest uh, breakage rate of our carbon boards, also because we've been doing it for a while now. But the uh, fact is, a glass fiber board will probably be hold longer than a carbon board. Okay. So if I want to talk clearly for a customer who doesn't know so much about it, can I say every five years you need a new board or isn't it possible to say like that? Or every hundred thousand vertical meters? Or I mean, if you live at Mount Baker and you never see ice or a rock, you probably will be able to use the board 10 years in a row. Yeah. If you go splitting in Vermont on the East Coast or in a shitty winter in the Alps, 
where you are exposed to rocks and to hard snow, maybe you you screw it up after three years. It's really difficult to say. Like promises in that case, it's it's difficult. But a snowboard, a solid board, will not be weaker or more durable than a split board. What about the graphics of the board? Will you always come with like mellow graphics like this, or you will come with really cool, trendy graphics like rainbow-colored unicorns, dogs, no. cats? The big important ones, you know. The split board is a kind of a it's it's a big investment for a rider, right? Yeah. And you don't want to have really super funky colors where in the first year you go, oh, this is crazy, this is the board I want, and then after half a year you actually you're sick of the graphics and you need to buy a new one simply for the reason of taste. But the rainbow-colored unicorn never gets old. Do you want to tell us something about the construction and the effects the construction has by hiking and while riding? With the full carbon construction used in the milligram, we have been able to make with a big distance of almost half a kilo the lightest split board on the world market five years ago, right? Okay. Yeah. So obviously all the competitors, they look how we're doing it and they They have been coming very, very close and to get really lighter than that without making the board fragile is a little bit critical. So I feel very conf confident with that construction right now. Okay. So the thing is, what else can you do to actually have the world's lightest split board? So let's say um, there is um, a few brands who have the world's lightest split board in the living room. Yeah. But the actual habi habitat of the split board is out here in the snow. Right. And you want to have the lightest split board in the snow and not in your living room. Yeah. So what we were doing, I've been experimenting the last three years with different coatings because what makes the board really heavy is the snow sticking on the board halves when you hike up. So you don't want to do kilos or something. Easily, easily. And I've been experimenting with Teflon, with uh, silicones, and first of all, the chemical way is not the right one because if you start to have a Teflon or a silicon coating, at the end it's going to end up on the mountain, so not good. So we tried a physical way regarding top sheet surfaces and this and that, and this is also the, 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 the search for a solution in the physical way was also a wrong one. So. We tried something else uh, with a principle which is coming from horticultural architecture. You know, all the, the, the greenhouses where they grow the salad in yeah. Spain and Morocco. Yeah. The roofs, they have a certain treatment where um, it lets ultraviolet radiation go through because this is what your salad needs yeah. to grow. Yeah. But what you don't want is that the roof and inside the, the room temperature heats up to 50 degrees. So we have been using the same principle and we have found a supplier who is doing that for horticultural architecture. We have found that and we are applying that behind the top sheet. So when we make the snowboard, we have a transparent top sheet. Behind the first layer is this lenticular additive, which is we call our brand name is stratospheric yeah. because it does the same thing what the stratosphere is doing to the earth. Mm -hmm. It reflects the sunlight yeah. and keeps the earth cool. And this lenticular additive is applied behind the top sheet, reflects the so-called UVB radiation and the near-infrared NIR radiation, which is responsible to heat up the surface. Because normally, and you see this especially with blackboards, the sun is heating up the top sheet and then snow falls onto it, it melts and then when the snow is on the top sheet, obviously it's in the shadow again, it cools down, it gets frozen, it, it gets frozen again and then you have a, a, a ice layer and the snow starts to pile up yeah. and very easily you have uh, per foot two kilos, you, you know how yeah. much a snowball weighs. Yeah. So with that stratospheric system, you can say we ha our snowboard outside in nature is four kilos lighter than all the other split boards okay, on the market. Okay, this I want to see.
Is that where you, you will see. Drive? You yeah. will see. Yeah, what is about if potential customers do have some issues? How do you do the customer service? I mean, you're a small brand and you keep on developing and you are pretty globally presented. And what about like kind of service, service issues? I mean, it can happen at every brand, it's not specific. And yeah, we all know that it sometimes really happens. And what can your customers do or what kind of service? So we have a customer service contact form where yeah. the person can get in touch with us and during office hours, normally within a few hours, we are answering. Okay. If it's a warranty case, we tell the person, please use the warranty form because you will find all the questions which we need to judge whether it's a production related warranty, this and that. Okay. And you can also email us pictures. Then we have a, a evaluation of the case. Let's say somebody hit a rock and the edge is blown out. Yeah. Um, we will tell the person this is not a warranty case, this is not our fault. But your board is just not stable enough. Probably, it maybe. It last a yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. good hitting rock yeah. session. You know how customers sometimes are, they try. <laughs> because of that, yeah. I, I ask you, yeah. So we look at the case, if it's not a warranty case, we are sorry, it's not a warranty case. Okay. But if it is a warranty case, we ship either a spare part immediately, let's say somebody loses a clip or we also have all the spare parts hardware in the online shop okay. to buy. If it's our fault, we ship immediately. Um, sometimes it's like a case where you say, it's not a warranty, but you just bought it. We feel sorry for you. Maybe you offer the customer an upgrade, saying like, okay, the board is two years old. It's not, or more than two years old, it's not warranty, but maybe it shouldn't have happened. So here is for a very good deal, a new board. Okay. And all the customers appreciate that and there's never any discussion. So if I break one half of a split board, yeah. can I order just one half of a split board? We've been talking about this very often, but the camber is never identical. Okay. Yeah. Um, we could offer that and sometimes uh, we have uh, board halves in the warehouse from other broken boards from the demo fleet or so from team riders we all keep them and we will tell the person send us your board we will check if we have a matching to, camera I don't want to send you my board I need my board no but you broke already one half so you send me the other half yeah. which you don't yeah, need yeah. so we try to find a matching camera yeah. but um, to really make a business model out of that and go like we offer you a board half to exchange it's impossible to have exactly the same camber. And, okay. and what you don't want is that you have like, you know, when the board looks like this, uh, and you're, you're riding, you're riding um, let's say a forest road, which is really flat and icy, you're gonna eat shit very badly. You're gonna I, I, catch I it. Yeah. Well. So we yeah. have been staying away from that for okay. now. So yeah, which is the best way to get one of your boards? So should I go to the shop or should I go to you directly? Either way, you go to the shop, you should support your local shop. Yeah. They offer incredible service. Maybe they have a demo fleet. If you are living too far away from the next shop, feel free to shop it on Amplit.com. Everything's possible. The, our main target is to make riders happy and to have a ride on Amplit, the chance is very big that they will be happy. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thanks.